Oh, hello, kids. What are you doing in my car? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, everyone, it's me, uh, Uncle Farmer uh, Dad Ben. Uh, I got the little lemon tree here today, and we're doing a creature feature. But we're not just doing a creature feature. This is a creature feature on the road. This is a nine-banded armadillo. Uh, I think Poggers got to him. He was in my backyard, and uh, he's, he's definitely not dead, but he's definitely not uh, very alive right now. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're taking him straight to a wildlife rehabber friend of ours, Austin Wildlife Rehab. But I wanted this to be as authentic and real for you guys as possible, simply because this is what happens whenever Uncle Ben can't rehab the animals himself. Uh, I tried to give this guy some uh, sugar water and some honey. Uh, they, they will eat cat food. I give them some grub tear of uh, mealworms, like botfly larvae, the grubs. Because in the wild, these guys are foragers and they eat just about anything. They eat little uh, plants and, and fruits, but the big thing is bugs. So they'll eat worms, uh, mealworms, all kinds of stuff like that, even spiders. And the greatest thing about these little guys is that they eat all the fire ants in your yard. So we got a bunch of fire ants in our yard and I showed you guys with, the, with me sticking my hands in there for the Patreon, a bunch of other things. We're gonna put that on the YouTube soon. But uh, if you take a little look here, you can see the nine different bands. That's why they call him a nine-banded armadillo. Uh, now he is, um, oh, poor baby. Now you'd never do what I'm doing. Never touch them with your bare hands. Um, I'm taking a risk by doing this that you guys should not take because they do carry leprosy. Uh, now it's very, very, very rare. And the strain of leprosy that they carry, which is a type of bacteria, doesn't really do well uh, in the human body. Similar to, similar to, uh, how rabies just doesn't do well in a possum's body. Um, these guys can carry rabies though. And leprosy uh, is, they're definitely a vector for leprosy as well. So you gotta be careful with that. Don't touch them, obviously wash your hands. We got tons of hand sanitizer in the car. Um, and I just wanted to bring this guy in as soon as humanly possible to this wildlife rehabber. Okay, so as I promised during these creature features, I'm gonna tell you guys about uh, the animal and how you can take care of them. Uncle Ben wasn't able to do everything he could for this old guy, but he did help him a little bit. He's a lot more lively now. Look at him. Oh. So the Aztecs called these guys uh, turtle rabbits, and in Spanish, uh, armadillo means the little armored one. Isn't that cute? Uh, and they have these plates of derma bone on its back. Uh, and the only weak spot on these guys is the belly. And uh, back in my older days, my friends and I used to go uh, control wild boar populations, and we'd always see these little armadillos running everywhere. And, my buddy said it's not even worth trying to shoot them on the back because uh, these can even deflect weak bullets and BB pellets and all that kind of stuff. So the first indication of this guy being injured is that he is missing a lot of little scales or, or little plates on his face. Um, these guys have a wide range of colors. They could be pink, red, black, red, or yellow, but it's clear that he's missing uh, some coloration there or he's missing some scales there because uh, this guy is mostly pink. Very cute little fella. Uh, they have these really long, sticky tongues. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Maybe if we get the chance, we'll get to look at it later. But uh, they're the only uh, animal besides humans that can contract leprosy. Uh, and I told you guys about that before. So they have really, really poor eyesight, and they're an incredible digger. Because I essentially walked up to him, and he was still, you know, moving around. He was still okay, but he, he was clear that poggers or well, some animal had gotten to him. And... Um, the little guy didn't really even see me pick him up. It wasn't until he was being picked up that he started to wiggle and, and kind of freak out a little bit. And I suppose the only other thing I could tell you guys about these little fellas is that uh, they are very neat. Their moms uh, give birth to identical uh, babies because I think they all share the same egg or something stupid like that. I don't know. Fact check me in the comments. What I meant to say was they are identical when they're babies because they're typically born in the same embryo. Uh, and then they're born with these very little soft shells and they're so, so cute when they're babies. Right, guys, so as you can see, this is the beautiful city of Austin. And uh, while it is very nice, especially right now in December, it is, uh, it's 52 degrees. This is a cold day for them. Uh, but even during the middle of the day, there's bumper to bumper traffic uh, for the most part. So this is what living in Austin is like. But look at this little baby boy. We are almost at the rehab center and we are gonna get him to safety very, very soon. Hang in there, buddy. This is the other side of Austin that not a lot of people show you guys. Uh, we definitely just heard a gunshot and we are right downtown. But you can see how this can be a little bit problematic when uh, even in people's driveways, you got people setting up camps and tents. But, uh, but we love the home. 
homeless here. You kids better not be horsing around back there in the back seat. All right, everybody. This is, uh, I guess it's called the Blair Woods Sanctuary, but uh, this is also Austin Wildlife Rescue. Everybody, you don't need to be any fancy, fancy special person to do a wildlife rehab. You can just be someone who owns a little bit of land like this, and you really don't need a lot of land to do this. This is what we're in the process of getting our uh, permits to do this uh, on our own, on our own practice, so I don't have to work through a mentor anymore to get this stuff done. Uh, but look, they've got their own little truck with the wildlife rescue. I'm sure that this is just some free publicity for them. Also, this is public, so... Uh, drop offs right there. Look, it's a little poppy. Oh, so we're gonna take this little guy out there and we're gonna we're gonna bring it in and see if we can see if we can get uh, them to help. I think this is one of their their drop off things, which is kind of interesting. But uh, but we're gonna bring him inside so we can talk to him. Goodbye. As you can see, he's still very much alive and kicking. Uh, he's a good little boy, but uh, he's not. I wanted to show you guys this is what they have here in front of the house and this is what it costs for them on average to rehab each of these things. And I assume that this doesn't include man hours. I'm certain it doesn't include man hours and people's time because they are a 501c3 nonprofit. This is what I guess the feed cost goes into on average of getting these guys to be uh, back into the wild. Makes sense that the raptors would be so expensive because they're giving them mice and all of that. But uh, there's our little jabringle bones. And then there's a little raccoon. We haven't had a raccoon yet, or a skunk. But uh, there's little poppies, Bambi, Sandy, little bunbos, very fun. And a little bit of a uh, jabringos. Okay guys, this is what it looks like whenever you take an animal to a wildlife rehab, it's really easy. They usually have something like this set up at the one in Pennsylvania that we dropped that dove off at. If you could go back to our old videos, you'll see that. Uh, it looks like they take in over 7,000 animals a year. Uh, and that's gonna be us in a couple, in a year actually from now, I'm trying to get the thing in the spring. So uh, pretty soon we'll be able to uh, do this on our own. But for now, you just fill out this information. Uh, you can give a little donation and that helps them a lot. Um, and uh, then we'll drop him off inside. Okay gamers, because of social distancing, we couldn't go in and see the other animals, which is typical, especially ever since COVID happened, I haven't been able to go in and visit any of the uh, rehab places and, and get footage for you guys. And I have tried. Uh, even my friends have been kind of weird about it just because of COVID, which I totally get. And they understand diseases more than most. But as you can see, guys, it's I'm, I'm not going to. They've got another location out in Elgin, she said. But you don't need a huge area of space to do this. You can get your own wildlife rehab or permit. And that's what we're doing. And the point of this, this, um, YouTube channel is I I want to show you guys and inspire you guys to do this. I want to show you guys that you can do this too. Love you guys a ton. Thanks so much to the Patreon. Again, I'm sorry to you guys because I haven't been posting that much. Um, that's because I've been taking a little bit of a mental health break. Also, we have a kangaroo now. Um, so I a lot's been going on. I am excited to make more content for you guys. I feel a lot better and a lot more rejuvenated. So uh, we will be making a lot more epic gamer poggers moment content for all of you i love you all thank you so much for watching thank you for still being here if you've been here since the very early days and uh we'll see you in the next video hang in there julia ah! always wash your hands before touching uh armadillos with leprosy <laughs> oh we're gonna crash